If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. We are the wind in the sails of your business. We are your compass. Chart your course towards your targets. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. You are listening to Africa Business Radio, where you get up-to-date insight on Africa business landscape. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available as podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. You're listening to Africa Business Radio, where you get up-to-date insights on the Africa business landscape. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available as podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. They are 1.8 billion globally. They will make 75% of workforce by 2025. They will outspace earnings of baby boomers in less than 10 years. Smartphones and tablets are the argument settlers and fact checkers for every conversation. Get more insights on African millennials on Africa Business Radio towards a profitable Africa. So you understand how it's typical to just get into sudden traffic in Lagos, especially on Fridays. And then, you know, it's now a situation of the traffic leaving the highway are not getting into the studio, so we're still restarting just um, a minute or so late this afternoon. But then, I have a very, very interesting guest, right? I have heard about him from a couple of people, and I was like, okay. And then when I was told I was going to be in the studio, I was like, ah, that's nice. Let's have this conversation now, especially about how brands can create lasting impressions with millennials. So this thing, we all know it evolves, and um, and you can't just... Um, say there's just one way to get things done. But anyways, we're going to get into conversation soon. So let me tell you about my guest this afternoon. It's, first of all, it's the African Millennial Radio Show on AfricaBusinessRadio.com. I'm Tommy Wally. As I have always been, I've not changed my name yet. And I'm not sure I'm ever going to do that. I'm not sure about that. All right. So it's um, a very wonderful afternoon. And I have a marketing communication specialist with close to 10 years of experience of creating customized experience shell solutions for brands across the fmcg technology manufacturing and financial service industries is the co-founder of requesa did i pronounce that well Rikisa. all right Rikisa. all right Rikisa africa Rikisa africa a leading experimental and activation company with operations in nigeria and ghana under his leadership, Rikisa has helped organizations including Oracle, Hitachi, Danone, Johnson & Johnson, Ala, Unity Bank, and Google to significantly improve their bottom line and connect with consumers through the development of customized experiential solutions that wins in the marketplace. So the bottom line is whatever thing you're supposed to do, whatever design you're making, whatever strategies you're making, whatever ads and whatnot you're making, if it's not making the books look good, I'm not sure it's a good one. Anyways, we're going to go into so much of this with Ayode Jirazak. <laughs> how are you doing now? I'm good, I'm good. Real yeah. good. All right, how's, how's, how's work been? Um, we wake up on, <laughs> on a good day and we go there and we do it. All right, I so keep, we I, love it and we do it. Right, I keep saying something, just do every day. That's just been my... You know, just enjoy every day. Just do every day. Only after day. Yeah. Two months into 2020. Hope the hope hope the money is coming in already. 
<laughs> we, we, we cannot complain. All right, cool, cool. So, um, DG, this is the written, um, articulated background of yourself, right? Can you just share the experience, right? Let's let's stray back. Say, so you see, close to ten years. So should I say twenty twelve to twenty thirteen? There about. So can you just talk about the experience of engaging with millennials, especially from the marketing point of view? Um, so if we're going all the way back to 2012, 2013, it's, that's just when I started out. Um, right. I was just like a year and a half or two okay. into my career. Okay. And I can tell you it was really interesting because I started out um, at a place where most people don't start out. I started out on campus. I started out as a oh. student. So I was a student at the time, but I was working in BlackBerry. Right. So right. I had a I had a day job, I mm-hmm. like to say, I had a day job that required creating campaigns and creating opportunities for brands, BlackBerry at the time, to mm-hmm. reach millennials. Right, right. Because again, they were out there. Now the strategy they used was, how can we get you, mm-hmm. who is a millennial, to mm-hmm. engage with your own, you know, peers in ways that would get them excited about the devices. Mm-hmm. To be honest, we created most of the best campaigns. So there's this campaign we created. And I'll give you an example. Um, mm-hmm. We created a campaign called Mirror Mirror. Mm. It was so huge at the time. They replicated it now on social media, and I laugh because okay. a lot of people do not know how they started out. Um, okay. In 2012, we created a campaign in a like that. It was called Mirror Mirror. The idea is this. You find any BlackBerry um, phone that you have, or if you don't have, you find a friend's phone, and you take a picture in front of a mirror. Oh, and okay. post it on... So at the time, it was your BB status. It was status and send a broadcast message and whatnot. And then the, the logo will show the, the Exactly. Dots. Right. So imagine right. how it has... Uh, it's, become, right. it's, become, it's become a thing. Like it's a fad now and mm-hmm. everybody's doing it. But at the time, it was just a social media campaign we created mm-hmm. to generate um, consumer engagement with the devices. Mm-hmm. So what we had was a lot of people that didn't have the devices wanted mm-hmm. to be cool because, again, it, it was the first way for people to know you had a phone and that's what it is now. And then the Apple guys now started doing that. And everyone, everybody's doing it now. Ah, that, was, that, that was so cool. How, how, was, how, was, the, how was the feeling... Of the success of that for you, it was huge. So I got I got an award in Blackberry at the time. Oh, we okay. won um, best campaign in the year, ah, right. in Nigeria at the time. Um, it was Lagos that won it. So and oh, I was okay. in Lagos. Oh, so okay. it was a big. So it was deal. Blackberry globally, and then Lagos. So we created won it in Nigeria. Okay, but the awards were globally. Oh right, so Lagos won it. Village and Lagos won it. Ah, ah. I might know you. <laughs> you took a selfie with you after, <laughs> right? I mean that's that's very interesting. So there's something I I I always throw. Like, um, so I would say that using the BlackBerry also. So 2011 to maybe 20, no, let me take it back. Maybe 2009 to maybe 2013. It was really the BlackBerry thing. Yeah, it was got BlackBerry. intensified 2010, 2011. Yeah, that was our right. era. Yeah, you know, it was BlackBerry. It was you know, pinging, it was pin, and everything like that. And then uh, BlackBerry maybe had an idea of just making it um, the simple messaging thing, but then it became a social network, right? And then that continued and then um, Android, Samsung came around and then um, the Apple thing also grew. And then, so things switched 2014, right? You had the S4 then that was just like, what phone is this? You know, the phone could do this, phone do could it, do that. Do, 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 do. I remember I attended them um, this um, conference somewhere and the winner or the conference got an S4 and everybody shouted like what it was with them it's Salat um, and at, at the time and then um, Simon Page Business School ah. right so it was ah, everybody wanted it. it was a civic civic center and then okay things continued and people were thinking okay this thing gets my data too much should I do video should I do I can't do videos I can't pay for videos I can't um, I'll just do pictures on my Instagram and things like that but then we saw influencers grow right on social media true videos so names are coming to mind right now with the skits and everything yeah, you know yeah. have, 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 holding the phone up and then we have 2018 where the people who are maybe 17 or 15 or 14 in 2011 were now grown so they brought their own flavor right into how so people nice engaged you know with things on the internet and then now 2019 so many things just started in fact the skit thing there's this dude on instagram that i think is known for creating most of the skits i've forgotten his name right now you see his logo pop up at every end of skits from mm-hmm. sydney and, and everybody now when it comes to engaging with millennials now right this is just me just breaking down the years how do you think that has evolved because that is what your hands are really into right now yeah so 
um, and I'll do very similar to what you did. In 2011, mm-hmm. the the model was very straightforward. It was, yeah. you know, engage them on, you know, easy chat type conversations, you know, the BBMs and pins and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But a lot has changed from then till now. And like you mentioned rightly, mm-hmm. right now we're in the era of video content. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not it's not even enough for you to just have before there used to be textual content. I mean, in twenty thirteens and twenty fourteens it was a lot of textual content. That's why you had the blogs. I mean Olori Supergirl was a hit, it was a hit at the period. Yeah. You had Linda Keji that was everybody's favorite, you know, go to mm-hmm. spot for info. Mm-hmm. But right now we don't want to nobody wants to read long texts, long stories any longer. They want yeah. it to be as quick as possible and as fast as possible. Now engaging with millennials in this era, mm. again, is a function of what do you want to sell? Mm. And how can you bring it to a place where they are most likely to be comfortable? Mm. The reality is that, as it is now, even the current social media platforms we have mm. are no longer going to be very relevant in two years. Well, tell me about that. Though. A lot of people are moving to TikTok and Triller. Mm, okay. That's the that's the most common thing. And what mm. and what is very interesting about this platform is very little text. It's all visual. It's pretty much all visual. And it's quick shots, you know, edited. I mean, everybody's coming a content creator right now. So... Brands need to become content creators and not just, um, it's no longer, it's about something we like to say, Rikisa, it's no longer about story sharing, mm. it's about story hearing. It's now storytelling and story sharing. So you need to hear from the consumers and take their information and put it into short videos. They don't want to engage with you like the way we have on YouTube now. Mm. So YouTube is a beautiful, beautiful platform where you can put a lot of videos. I don't, I don't know that in three years... Mm people want to watch long videos any longer because they're mm. going into shorter and shorter and shorter clips. TikTok is all shut, 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 shut. But, mm-hmm. And that's where everybody's going into. Right. And that's what millennials are becoming. That's, that's where they want to be um, spoken to now. So, again, if you look at Nigeria as a Lagos as a um, short roadmap, you will find out that a lot of people in Lagos do not use Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they have the largest population of millennials on on profile, but the reason is largely because the only way to sign up for a number of other platforms is to have a Facebook account. Yeah. So that's the brilliant, the brilliant idea they have. But the reality is, if I'm trying to reach out to millennials now, don't go on Facebook. That, yeah, that's that's actually true. <laughs> yeah. And again, a lot of people are migrating back to Twitter, and it's really not because of the um, content. It's the fact that it's short, it's quick. You can almost consume it move ahead it's not you know i can get instant reaction there's a lot of you can clearly comment i mean people go to instagram now just to read comments you see it there you say i'm only here for the comments i'm only here for the comments because consumers and a lot of millennials now want to give opinions mm. so they don't even just want to watch they want to be able to speak back to you they want to be able to give you their feedback they don't want to just watch the video and say oh nice video which is why atl as we know it mm. locally is dying there's a lot of all the billboards and whatnot millennials don't connect with those platforms any longer mm-hmm. they don't where I say, oh, I saw that nice billboard, that TVC. As a matter of fact, a lot of millennials see their TVC right now on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If the TVC is not on live with Linda or any of those platforms, mm-hmm. they're not watching it. Mm-hmm. They, you, I, I cannot recall the last time I was paying attention to a TVC on TV. That wasn't because I was a marketing person. So for me, when mm-hmm. I watch TVC now, it's because I'm marketing. I'm thinking, hmm, I like what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But more importantly, the TVCs that catch my own buying attention mm-hmm. is the ones I find on social because they are more likely to engage with them and say, okay, this product, and I could get reviews. Once I see an ad on Instagram, mm. before I make a buy decision, I go into the comment section and check mm-hmm. and see people that may have bought it because that's what you will find there. People are mm-hmm. like, oh, I bought this. was a bad idea. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. I'm like, okay, great. I'm not doing this. And I just need three or four reviews. So for brands right now, to engage millennials, you have to have a very active online presence. You have to have a strategy that is always on. And by strategy, I mean both your PR, your BTL, your, your ATL strategy has to be always on in the sense that you have to constantly be there to make responses. So if there's a negative reaction, you cannot stay away and say, I had a nice content and my video is real good. People are loving it. Mm. You have to be there to counteract the negativity because a lot of brands are very um, laid back, especially in our local space, in Africa as it is. Mm. A lot of brands just put the content out there and just leave it at. Mm. You know what? Let's, work. let's have, this is, this, is, this is really a lot. I could hear things about um, feedback, about, um, about uh, millennials, been opinionated very right um about brands not doing the, the push right now but then just dangling something and they just hover around it and help you spread it you know let's take a very short break right now and then we'll be back to talk about a very very interesting topic that might cause trouble it's not cause trouble <laughs> <laughs> all right then
Exploring the African narrative, leading the conversation, and enlightening our listener towards a profitable Africa. S. Cool on the beat. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I have, I'm sure you guys have been enjoying Deji Razak. I mean, it's been, I'm sure you guys have notes with you, you know, and so many other things that you're using to take these notes right now from Deji Razak. Deji, your Instagram is Deji Zak, right? Yes. That's D E J I Z Z A Q, right? So, um, obviously, we can't have this whole conversation in the next set of minutes, right? So, I think you should go on Instagram and maybe shoot him a DM and ask some more questions. Are you also on Twitter? Yes, I am. Same, same, same handle. Name. Same handle also, right? So, that you can just, you know, bombard him, get him to lunch one day, buy him his favorite meal and just ask, ask the questions. Of course, if he's going to charge you, it's worth it anyways. Um, there's this thing about influencers, right? And then... I don't know. I just think that people are, are people still really down with influencers. So the question is, what what was your take on influencers? I mean, influencers, the hundred k's and above, or fifty k's and above, and then the micro influencers slash advocates, mm-hmm. right? So someone said that you know, the guys with the five thousand and everything, they actually have a family, right? That if they actually recommend something, that family, you know, would think that it's really really good. So in creating a lasting impression one of the ways in creating lasting impression with millennials right uh, would you what would you say about engaging influencers right in the campaign or in how you want to push your business forward versus engaging micro influencers um, slash advocates yeah all right um you know it's very interesting that you yeah. brought up this influencer topic because yesterday yesterday i was at social media week all right and um a very good friend of mine um mm-hmm. launched um, what is called the nigerian influencer marketing report um dots media house okay because i had um hook also launched a report on gen z ha ah. hook and yeah so I'm, I'm happy their reports i'm just happy <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the influencer marketing report um one of the first things you'd notice about influencers in nigeria and the mm-hmm. ones you describe as the 5k ones mm-hmm. they're categorized as nano influencers okay now those um that audience mm. in two three years mm. they would be the hub of most influencer marketing and okay. if you ask me my take on influencers yeah. the, the honest truth is that i feel like the biggest problem we have locally yeah. and I'm, by locally i mean africa yeah. because again it's africa to the world yeah. i don't think nigeria now yeah. the biggest problem we have in africa is that a lot of the marketing and influencer marketing that we do yeah. is almost um scattergun okay it's just pick a, pick someone who is big pick a big name and say yo put my product out there you know yeah. I mean, I saw something somewhere and I saw, um, I cannot recall, I think it was Copy, Copy is a brand ambassador for Tiger. Okay, okay, okay yeah. The brand. And I'm thinking, oh, it's great, but does Copy really drink Tiger? Mm, okay. You know, these are questions that we should ask. Listen, mm. what was the thought process behind picking Copy as a face for Tiger brand? Tiger's mm. a beer brand. Mm-hmm. Copy is doing Pepsi. Mm. She resonates more with the Pepsi brand okay. because she's more, and I'm not being, um, gender stereotype and say mm-hmm. females don't drink beer. To be honest, mm-hmm. females drink beer. Mm-hmm. But the question is, is Copy, Copy's lifestyle and what she's portrayed, has she shown us to be uh, a beer drinking Maybe person? they're trying to say Tiger is a cool drink. Yes, I know that's, that's the positioning. Mm. But sometimes you need to first, before you launch your, I feel like the strategy that we work with, before you launch your big influencer, mm-hmm. get those little influencers. If it's So for example, get an honorary super girl who is in hell they live in mm. to do something with Tiger. Mm. She's like, what is my favorite beer? I'll take Tiger because it's light, it's this, it's that, it's that, you know? And it gives me all that. Now, Olori is not the copy, but she's big enough to gather conversation, get conversation starting about, you know, how women yeah. are drinking. Do you understand what I'm saying? I get it. Now. And then, before we now say, you know what? Olori is doing it, this is doing it, mm-hmm. Pamela is doing it, and all those guys are doing it. Mm-hmm. And copy is also doing it. So, yeah. copy is almost like influenced by the fact that everybody else is doing it, and she's mm-hmm. not doing it. But the reality is that it is really strange when you tell me Copy is drinking Tiger because I see her as a gelato. She's, she's all pink and all frilly. That's all. That's the image she sells to us on social media. Yeah. That I'm daddy's girl. I just like little cute things. And mm-hmm. then Tiger beer. <laughs> okay. It's almost like 
what's happening here? Okay. <laughs> okay. You know, if I it was a pink berry, mm-hmm. the mm. ice cream brand. The ice cream brand, yeah. Resonates. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's the that's the biggest miss with influencer marketing in mm-hmm. locally is that we pick the brands to pick these big influencers mm-hmm. without actually asking the question as to what does the regular, the, the everyday John mm-hmm. do and how do they see these influencers? What is their, what is the image of these influencers to these people? Mm. Now, I was on my way, on my drive here, um, mm-hmm. I don't know if you know Tomike. Mm-hmm, um, she did, um, she, so there's a project I did with Go Slow, the ice cream brand. Mm-hmm. She helped me host the program. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that from the day she started the program till now, mm-hmm. she's got a lot of mentions, a lot of comments, a lot of people tagging her. Oh, mm-hmm. I bought this ice cream because of you. I bought this ice cream because of you. Right. Why? Because Tomika is your everyday good girl. She's a yeah. jolly happy baby. Mm-hmm. And of course, people see her and think, oh, Tomika drinks go slow. Go slow is cool. So they go into a store and, ah, that's the ice cream Tomika lunch. And they pick it. And then they tag her. So you see, that is influencer marketing working. Right. Because we picked right. her because we wanted a good looking girl who is, you know, good girl, has no... Who is not so high from the everyday exactly, people and they can the relate, time. and they can, yeah. and that's the biggest challenge of influencer marketing locally. They do not necessarily ask the questions that are supposed to be asked. Again, what are the millennials saying? And this is why, like you mentioned, we need to have a lot of reports. People are not asking the questions. What do millennials want, and how do we approach them? It is not. It's not enough to have a great strategy. You must ask the audience you're speaking to. Are you even reaching them? Mm. And that's what's important. Mm. All right. So I mean, we. This is. This is. <laughs> this thing there. <laughs> now I want to ask a question. So the um, the 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 10k and below, mm-hmm. right? And then uh, when it comes to advocacy, I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yeah. So it, it's one thing for you to have. I want to have a campaign now. I can break my campaign into different um, categories. Now the f- guys with the 5k and everything. What impact do you think they would have, right, in influence? Because I think I have this thing in my head, but I just don't like to just jump into conclusions without taking some sort of it. Now, you are in the business of it. That's your core, right? From experiences, what do you think the role of these people would do, right, in the long run of a business actually establishing a lasting impression? I don't know if that question is clear. Yeah, so you said the nano influencers, what is their role in yeah. how businesses would survive yeah. mm-hmm. in the long run mm-hmm. the reality is that they are the so it's almost like asking what is the role of mass markets in how businesses will thrive mm-hmm. there's a reason why for every lexus there's a toyota good i'm enjoying this now that that's for every yeah. so for every premium mm-hmm. there is a mass production right now we understand that the, there's a need for brands to have the copies and the dividos of this world mm-hmm. push their narrative and mm. tell their message mm. but the reality is for you to connect with the people who speak their language even politicians understand this the most you exactly. must get the grassroots exactly. activists involved exactly and in this case we're mm. talking about the nano influencers they are the ones who would be able to speak the message like you said of reaching their neighbors so over and above saying it there's credibility to it there's this i know the guy hence i believe what he's saying is true it's not just because they paid him a truckload of money. Mm-hmm. It is that what he's saying about this product must have credence. I mean, it's just my neighbor mm-hmm. right there. I mean, mm-hmm. how how else would he have known about this product if he hadn't used it? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's the that's the work that brands need to do. That's the bridge that needs to be crossed. Because the reality is, the middle class in Nigeria is very large now. So it is not enough for you to speak to one end of the middle class. I think you've reached everybody. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to cross from point a to point b because mm-hmm. again our middle class is big so mm-hmm. when you're speaking middle class in nigeria it's no longer enough to say if you earn above a hundred thousand hundred thousand mm-hmm. is middle class the same way six hundred thousand is middle class yeah that's just true different that's levels true. of middle class you know? that's true yeah, levels it's, to this thing lexus and toyota exactly so um i want to throw this at you really uh, this decade is going to be huge so when i broke down the different years especially with the last 10 years mm-hmm. right we saw a change, a switch in 2019. There was just that switch in how things... You can't bring the same strategy you used in 2018 Absolutely into not. 2019. So, what do you think this decade is going to look like? You could break it down maybe um, 2025 and then, you know, to the end of it. So, that so, if anybody really wants to get their businesses going, right, and then they want to t- think 10 years, I think this is something that they really need to consider. So, to be honest, the, like I said earlier, the first thing is that in this decade, brand needs to become very intentional. So, over the last 10 years, mm-hmm. there was a move from 
um, again, look at the kinds of platforms that we're using to speak to each other. Mm. There was a move from billboards where we cannot measure particularly. Mm -hmm. You know, we cannot convert, we cannot measure conversion. We can just say, oh, they saw it. But how do we know they bought because they saw it? Mm. There's a move from those kinds of platforms to things like Instagram Mm. and Facebook where we know they are seeing it, we know Mm. they are clicking it, Mm. but now, are they really buying? Mm. And then there's now even a more intentional move to now, to, to stop, to start saying, okay, we know they are buying, but what are they even saying? Why are they not buying every day? Mm. Because a lot of the millennials we have now are not brand loyal. Mm -hmm. Brand loyalty is now, it's harder. Back in the days, if you used to drink milk, if you were a pig person, it was just pig, it was just that. But right now, there's a lot of what's available, what is the most, I mean, we, Growing up, I used to have favorite jeans that I used to bear. If it was not a Fubu or what's that big guy with the cartoon face? Uh, um, uh, what, uh, he'll figure. Um, I can't remember. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. They were very huge and were mm-hmm. part of my childhood. And were like, if you didn't have those jeans with those nice um, patterns, you were not the cool guy. If you didn't wear it, sorry, I said Hugh Finger just now. I mean, these Abba boys have messed my mind. Yeah. Up. Hugh it's Finger. Okay. Hugh Finger. Sorry. And then if you have, if you didn't have all those things, you were not cool. But right now, nobody cares for the brand name of your jeans. Okay. It's not because there are no brand names any longer. Okay. It's that millennials are now more focused on how does it look? How does it make me feel? Right. Not as really right. who made it. Okay. You know, that's it's why more personal. it's now personal. It's not personal. It's not it's no longer, oh, this is a nice shirt. It is now this is a nice shirt that looks good on me. Mm. You know, people would gladly tell you that a tailor made a cloth. Because it looks good on them. As opposed to, I'm wearing a designer, but it looks really big and I don't want to post a picture on Instagram. Mm. So brands need to get into that space where in two, three, three years from now, a lot of brands need to become more vocal on social. And by vocal, I mean listen more. You have to be there more. Especially in the, because a lot of millennials are on social media right now. Mm-hmm. Now, even in the experiential space where I play in the you know, BT, BTL space, mm-hmm. you need to have a lot of feedbacks. Mm-hmm. You need to sit down there and take a lot of feedback and say, okay, you did this. We did this for yes. you. We had this campaign. You were there. This event was beautiful. What did what did you get from it? Because if the brands are not taking feedback, there's no way they're going to grow. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for this interesting session. I, I think this is that episode where I have to emphasize the survey. So we're working on the African Millennial reports right and there's a survey on getupinc.com where you can just take it and then we have a number of um um survey it was it people fill it and then we just generate a report from it talk to organizations to give their reviews on it and then we push it to the push public to for me. free right um guys it's it's a very very interesting decade coming you know you can't go above not making sure that millennials are outside or what i'm putting out you, you can't just go above you, you can't just think that millennials don't they are, they, are, they, are participant, they are participants in you the process. You have to bring them, yes, yeah. into the boardroom As a matter of fact, a lot of the brands I work with now are mm-hmm. doing a lot of research around that involves the the consumer in the production. Because if they are not there, at the end of the day, they By buy you, what you they spent... know. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much for being on the African Millennial Radio Show. I mean, Dejirazak is... Is, is such an experience. I mean, I experienced <laughs> It's such an experience right now. All right, guys, you should actually send him a DM. You know, Deji, if you can, do you do medium posts on things like this? Just um, So, again, I'm, I'm really, really trying to put my words to paper right now. Yes, please. I mean, this is very, very important. Even if it's short things, just scribble something. If I you will. can just write it on, on a sketch and just take a picture of it. Okay, follow me on I'm Instagram. I post a number of... Um, I mean, follow him, especially Instagram. for guys who are trying LinkedIn. to get their businesses to the next level. You need to make this morning you know i mean these are the conversations that you should try and have if, if it's a sunday evening or a monday morning or something like that right thank you very much for being on another edition of the african millennial radio show don't forget to go on africa business radio to listen to past editions of the show um this pod- podcast will be available in a bit and on this note i'll say bye for now have a very wonderful friday evening don't drink and drive and yes please wash your hands a lot use hand sanitizers bye